in less than two months of getting into this business, we had made a loss of 8,500 rands. It was brutal. Hi guys, it's Mali and welcome to Let's Talk Personal Finance, the channel where we discuss how to make money and how to manage it. In my 2021 financial goals update video, I mentioned that I started a new business uh, this year as part of my ongoing plan to double my income by the end of 2021. Now, if you're interested in the business, you want to know what it is, how it works, uh, what challenges I've encountered so far, stay tuned. The business in question is a rent to buy motorcycle business, which simply put means that I buy motorcycles which can be used for delivery and then I rent them out to individuals who then use these bikes to deliver goods such as fast food or even groceries on platforms such as Uber Eats, Mr. D Food, and even Woolworths um, delivery. Now, before we go any further, please note that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you're looking for financial advice, please speak to a registered financial advisor. So I buy all of my bikes brand new using cash and after I buy the bikes I have to get them registered, get a license for the bikes, I also have to get a tracker installed um, in the actual bike itself and then after I've done all of this I start looking for an individual who's uh, interested in renting out the bike and then once I find this person we then both sign a rent to buy contract. The contract includes information such as how long uh, the contract will last for, so the term of the contract, how much money the renter will pay for each installment, um, how frequent the renter is required to pay an installment. So for me, it's either weekly or bi weekly, depending on when they get paid, because different platforms pay their drivers at different. Um, time periods, what the renter can or cannot do uh, to or with the bike whilst they're still renting the bike from me, what will happen in the event that the contract is breached and what should happen in the event that the contract is terminated early. The last thing that I include in this contract is when and how the ownership of the bike will be transferred once the term of the contract has ended. I also ask the renter for their personal details such as their address, um, their contact information, uh, their next of kin, the next of kin's contact information and address if possible. And then once we have both signed the contract, I then give the renter the bike and start making money. The easiest way to get someone to rent your bike is to talk to um, other delivery bike drivers. Uh, so they're the best people to consult because they know other drivers and they also know people who are interested in renting out bikes. Now, if you don't, if you're just getting started and you don't know anyone who is a delivery bike driver personally, you can just go to either a mall or a shopping center um, that has a food court Go to the parking lots and I promise you at somewhere in the parking lots, you will see a whole bunch of like Uber Eats drivers, Mr. D delivery food drivers that are just congregating and waiting for orders to deliver. And if you can, if you find them, just approach them, start talking to them and they'll gladly help you out. Now, once you get a potential renter, you firstly have to speak to them, get to know them a bit. And you can also ask them for uh, documentation such as like their proof of address, um, a copy of their motorbike license because that's very important, as well as some form of identification. Honestly, this is the trickiest part. Your ability to vet out different people and to choose good renters as well as your ability to manage the renters that you have will either make or break your business. It'll determine ultimately whether you make a loss or you make a profit. 
Now, I wish I could tell you a foolproof way of getting good tenants, but to be honest, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. I am, however, going to share with you guys two incidences that I've had uh, with two different renters uh, for two different bikes, and hopefully you can learn from my experiences and they can guide you if you do decide to get into this business yourself. Okay, so the first incident happened with the very first bike that I got and I got this bike and uh, with my brother under our um, investment property company, Nami Prop. Uh, yeah, so this was our first bike. We got a renter, everything was good. Signed the contract, gave him the bike and this was towards the end of May. And I kid you not, a week, no wait, less than a week later, this guy had already damaged our bike and uh, now the damage was a bit minor so he had scratched up the bike a bit and he had also broken the delivery box so the box that you put the food in so after he damaged the bike he contacted us told us what was going on and we gave him we told him that he could miss a payment um, postpone a payment rather uh, so that he has enough money to like fix the bike and get a new like delivery box so that he could continue working um yeah so that was the first red flag another thing was that as the weeks went on occasionally he would make excuses about why he could not pay and he would always ask for us to postpone the payment and you know some reasons for postponing payment are valid like, for example, someone might be too busy on the appointed day to actually make the payment. And then they make the payment, like, the next day. That's understandable. And oftentimes, like, these different platforms might delay payments as well. So in those cases, it makes total sense if the renter cannot pay. But this guy was just giving just weird, random excuses as to why he could not pay. And that was red flag number two. Now, now it was around July, mid-July. Um, he contacts us again and he says, yo, I've been in an accident. I don't know. I think he said someone was trying to rob him and then he tried to escape. But then they caught up with him and, and he got into an accident. I don't really remember the full story. But long story short, he damaged our bike. Like the damages were bad they were severe and at this point i think he just sent us like pictures if i have them if i can find them i'll insert them um in the video now and yeah so he sent us uh pictures of the damage and stuff and at this point my brother and i weren't really sure what to do because on one hand we kind of wanted to take our bike back because like this guy was firstly he's missing payments uh, secondly, he's constantly like damaging the bike. But at the same time, we were like, okay, you know what? Let's wait a couple of weeks and um, give him time to fix the bike. And then we can take it after he has fixed, you know, some of the issues and stuff. Um, yeah, so that was the plan. And then a week or two later, he's talking about how uh, his profile got blocked and he hasn't been working for three days. Like, a whole lot of dodgy stuff at this point we were like you know what let's take the l let's cut our losses and let's just get our bike back and the worst thing is the amount of damage that he had caused to the bike we got a quotation uh from a garage to find out how much it would cost us to fix the bike and it was over seven thousand rands worth of damages seven thousand that's like a third of the cost of a new bike it was absolutely ridiculous and at this point um he had missed like two weeks worth of payments actually just above two weeks so he already owed us a thousand five hundred rands and then on top of that he had caused by uh, he had caused damage with seven thousand rands which means in less than two months of getting into this business we had made a loss of eight thousand five hundred rands it was brutal. Now, the second incident happened with a different bike and a different driver, and it happened in August. And this was a bike that I had bought 
uh, by myself. Um, yeah, so I was really excited. I'm like, let me get this money. Got a brand new bike and I asked my brother to help me get a driver. He got me someone and like initially this guy was like eager, like he was eager. Um, at this point in the process, I think we were still trying to get the bike registered and that was taking a bit of time. So we couldn't actually give him the bike until the bike was registered and we had bought the license plates and all of that jazzy stuff. Um, so like legit, he would text my brother almost every single morning and he'll be like, yo, um, is the bike ready? Can I come pick it up? You know, I want to start making money for you and for me, you know, when can I start working? Like he was very eager and he'll constantly contact my brother and my brother was like, no, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. But eventually the bike was ready. And on the day that we had decided, agreed on for him to actually come and collect the bike, I think we had said he should come at like nine, right? Both parties had agreed. And then nine comes, he doesn't show up. 10, he's still not there. 11, 12. At this point, we're calling him like, yo, what's going on? Are you still going to come collect the bike? And to be honest, at this point, I was a bit hesitant on giving him the bike because I was like, it's... It's inconsistent, you know, for the past week, you've been so eager, constantly texting and messaging and saying, hey, I want to start working. When can I get the bike? But now the bike is available and you keep making up stories saying, oh, no, I'm almost there. Oh, no, I had to go here quickly. And it was just, yeah, <laughs> not good vibes. So eventually, I think at like 1 p.m. on the day that he was supposed to pick it up, because at this point we had told him, if you don't pitch, we're getting a new driver, find another bike. So eventually he pitched up. And when we spoke to him and went through the contract with him, like he seemed like a nice guy, you know, even my mom was like, yeah, no, he seems proper, seems mature, seems responsible. And at this point, I was like, you know what, this could work. So this was, I think on a Thursday, we gave him the bike. And then the following day on Friday, he contacted us and said, hey, the bike is not working. He tried driving it for a bit and then it was giving him issues and stuff. So we went to the place where we, where we had bought the bike. Uh, the guys had a look at the bike and they said, no, it's the tracker. So the person who had installed the tracker installed it and was blocking something and that was preventing the bike from working properly. So yeah, so this was now on a Friday. So we're like, okay, it's cool. Um, I tried getting in contact with the tracking company to tell them the issue and to ask them to send someone to um, adjust the positioning of the tracker. That was like a whole nother story. Like it was a disaster. That alone was a disaster on its own. Um, so I couldn't really get through to anyone that Friday, but I managed to speak to someone from the checking company on Saturday. So I spoke to them and they were like, okay, it's cool. Let's set up an appointment for Monday. And then, um, yeah, we'll send someone over to fix the bike. Now at this point, the bike was not in my possession. I'd already given it to the renter, but I was like, you know what? It's not a big deal. I'll just contact him and ask him to pull through on Monday so that, you know, the tracker issue can get sorted and stuff. Um, and all of Saturday, I tried calling him. We tried calling him. He was not answering. Man was off the grid. Well, we weren't panicking. We're like, okay, it happens. It's fine. Sunday, the whole day, we tried contacting him, tried calling him. Calls are going to voicemail. And fortunately, though, the tracker was working. So we could track the bike and we knew where the bike was. Um, yeah. And then Monday, the day of the appointment comes, we try calling him. He's still not answering. At this point, I had to cancel the appointment with the uh, people from the tracking company because there was no bike for them to fix. And I was kind of getting worried because it's like it's three days and he's been off the grid. And I spoke to someone from the tracking company. I was like, hey, at this point, I was fed up. And I was like, I just want my bike back. So I spoke to him and I was like, hey, 
can you guys please go and get my bike for me and then that's when i found out no um for tracking companies they only recover your vehicle if it has been stolen or if you were hijacked and he said that they don't get involved in like domestic um issues i think that was the term that he used um so like legit he was like the best thing you can do is to go to his house wait for him there and then get your bike from him when he gets back home so now you know it was a work day so i had my nine to five work to do so i couldn't really actually go but fortunately my parents were free and they set out to town to track this guy so they were legit hunting for him um so the first place they went to was to mr d delivery um and then they spoke to the guy there who deals with the delivery drivers and stuff and he said yeah i know i know this guy but like the last time i saw him was friday so now in my mind i'm like he hasn't been working like no one knows where he is i'm panicking a bit and it's like this thing of i just bought a brand new bike i bought it cash and now it might be stolen and i might never get it back again that was just out of this world that's a horrible feeling to have so yeah after that my parents then decided instead of like following him around town because like he was driving and going to different areas they decided to go to his house so that dress that he had given us as his residence they got there fortunately he actually lived there um and then um they spoke to his wife his wife was there she tried to contact him um and he was not answering his phone she tried she tried she tried eventually she decided to call his brother and it turned out that at that point in time he was with his brother so then my parents got to speak to him and then they told him hey we need to meet up pronto and then um they finally meet up with him and they're asking him like three days you're off the grid how can you be off the grid you know we've been trying to call you contact you and then he he said that um his phone was off right for three days and he didn't have a charger to charge it but for some reason his wife's phone like i just i'm sorry but like it doesn't make sense to me okay that that was a <laughs> dodgy excuse i cannot yeah i'm I, I don't know it just seems suspicious and at this point i was like you know what a person who we cannot reach a person who we cannot communicate with is not a good business partner especially in this delivery and rental business you need to be able to contact the person you know and we couldn't talk to him for like three days straight so at this point we decided you know what we're getting the bike back getting the tracker fixed and we're going to get a new renter for the bike and yeah i kind of felt bad about making that decision but at the end of the day i did not feel comfortable having him as a renter for our bike especially after what had just happened yeah so that was the second instance so just a few takeaways from my experiences so far oh wait before i get into that though currently we managed to fix the first bike that had issues that was destroyed uh, fortunately most of the damage was superficial it was still costly to fix but he hadn't damaged like the super important stuff like the what do you call it the engine you know and all of that fancy stuff that makes the bike run so we managed to fix up the bike and we got a another renter and so far this guy is superb he pays on time communicates no complaints there uh, and with my bike same thing we got another renter and this guy's proper like he communicates he pays on time sometimes he even pays in advance you know date now uh to summarize what you need to look for in people you need to make sure that the information you're getting from them is correct it's accurate the next of kin information is also important if you are ever in a situation like i was where you can't contact the person who's renting the bike directly having someone else's contact number 
um, is crucial because you might be able to contact them. Um, another thing to take away from this is that communication is important. If you're going to be in this business, you need to try uh, your best to find people who will communicate, people who will tell you if they're going to make a late payment, uh, people who will tell you if they have damaged or scratched up your bike. It's absolutely important to get someone who communicates because uh, that just makes your life easier. Um, but with regards to this communication thing, you only really find out whether or not someone is um, a good communicator and actually um, communicates uh, once you start working with them. Another thing is to have boundaries. So you have a contract, you need to stick to it. If you say, for example, missing two payments means you have breached the contract, then once a renter has missed those two payments, you need to terminate the contract. Um, otherwise, if you don't, they're probably going to miss the next four payments, you know, and you're just digging yourself into a bigger financial mess by doing that. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I have for this video. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I have missed. Um, so if you guys have any questions about stuff that I mentioned in this video or stuff that I didn't mention, please leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, depending on the number of questions, I might, I'll probably just uh, reply directly or I'll make a part two um, video answering all of those questions. So please guys, don't hesitate to ask any questions that you have. And please like this video if you liked it, please share it. Um, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. That would mean a lot. And remember, guys, you're never too old or too young to talk about personal finance. Toodles!